If you are a substitute teacher or even a student teacher, this video is all for you. I'm going to discuss the Ultimate Substitute Finder, a resource that I swear by and a resource that has led me to become the go-to sub. If this is something you are interested in, then keep watching this video. All right, like I said, my name is Asia. If you have not been here on my channel before, this channel is called It's Miss Lane, and today we are talking about the Ultimate Substitute Finder. So let's go ahead and Let's get right into it. So when you get this resource, the first thing you'll get is purpose of this binder. The purpose is pretty much to ensure that you have a successful and thriving subbing experience. I mean, I get it. Substitute teaching, it can be a challenge, you know, just you never know what the class may be like. There's all these stereotypes and stigmas, but honestly with this binder, trust me when I say you are going to feel so comfortable and so confident, not only within yourself, but in the classroom, you know, I promise you, this is going to help you. This is going to guide you so you can become that go-to sub. Okay, next, this is probably one of my favorite parts. I mean, I love all the parts, but this one is really important. So this is all about positivity. Now, I don't want to throw you off. You're probably like, uh, positivity, what? What? <laughs> so pretty much with this one, and I will include images on the side so you can see a nice close up, but passion, goals, quotes. So what are you most passionate about in the classroom? Obviously you can handwrite this, you can type it in um, since there is an editable file that I do um, give you with this resource. And the point of answering, you know, what your passion is, what are your goals? you know, while substitute teaching? What are some of your motivational and encouraging words or quotes that you would wanna list on here? And I do this because as a sub, as a teacher, just as a human being, we are going to have those times where we feel down, right? And when we're feeling down in the gutters, you know, maybe it's a challenging day, a challenging class, things just didn't go as planned. We want to uplift ourselves, right? We want to feel good and confident. We don't want to be down in the gutters. So I like opening up my binder. I have it right in the front, a tab that says positivity, and I could just go there, reflect, remind myself, you know, what are my goals? Why am I teaching? Why am I passionate about this? And then it's like, oh yeah, that's why. And it kind of helps you get through the day and just, it's a reminder that, you know, every day may not be rainbows and butterflies, but you always need to remember the end goal. So positivity, I love just looking back at this for that extra support and to lighten up the day, right? We wanna be happy. Okay, so I give you these templates. These templates are notes for the teacher. Oh boy, when I say teacher loves notes, they absolutely love notes. They love knowing the details and how the day exactly went. So obviously you would print out multiple copies, so you just have these ready to go in your binder, of course. And notes for the teacher, so important. Your you know, information that way, they will know you were a rock star and they will definitely give you a call back so you can come do some future jobs. Absences, helpful students, needs, improvement, just you know, write the name um, right here and then you can always include the details if it was a serious situation on the back. Did you get through the lesson plan? I mean, they wanna know, did you pretty much survive the day? If you didn't get through everything, totally okay. Just say, you know, we got through this, this, and that, and you need to continue this. It will be fine. And then I kind of give you, you know, this blank template that way if you need to write additional notes and so forth about the day. So within the ultimate substitute binder that I have, obviously I have tabs, and one of the tabs is titled management. So. Management, I mean classroom management and behavioral management. These two things are super duper important. I mean, I cannot emphasize that enough. Obviously, as a teacher, as a substitute, right, you need to know a lot of things. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to know, right, from all of the core subject areas to different strategies you can use for classroom management and dealing with behaviors. However, both are very important, but if you could only be good in one thing and obviously progress as you teach more and get more practice, but 
the first thing you should become a superstar in is classroom management. You can ask any administrator, any teacher, I promise you, they will say focus on your classroom management and then focus more on how can I be a better teacher when it comes to writing and math. Obviously, you always want to work on those things. There's always, you know, um, room for improvement, but first get that classroom management down. So, of course, I have incorporated classroom management strategies. I mean, a a, a good amount of things you can do. Obviously, you always want to do what the teacher states in the lesson plan um, because you know students love routine, so they are familiar with those strategies. And then two, you know it works. But those strategies may work with the main teacher. It may not always work um, for you or maybe you want to implement a few things because sometimes when it comes to managing a class, you need to try a few things. So. This list is helpful. It's good to know a few things in the back of your head. So I mean, offer praise, you know, do a simple and effective point system, be kind and firm. The list goes on. And then obviously the more practice you get, the more teaching you do, you know, you might communicate with the teacher next door, principals, uh, search the internet to gain more classroom management strategies that you can use. And you wanna make note, right? You wanna add those to your list that way. If something doesn't work, move on to the next thing and you will never run out of strategies for classroom management. Same thing with behavioral management. Again, lots of strategies I have provided for you. These work, they work. And maybe not all of them will work with all of your classes that you sub and that's why you have to play around with them a bit. So one thing that's really important is to be attentive. You know, you're, the teacher you're subbing for should usually mention helpful students, students you need to keep an extra eye on. Again, that's good information because you can be attentive of the classroom and if you see an issue occurring, boom, you can de-escalate it really quick. So those are some good strategies. And then again, a blank template so you could start, you know, finding out your own teaching style and what works when you need to, you know, work with a student that may have behavioral issues and so forth because when you have these management strategies in place, everything else just kind of falls, you know, normally everything then works out um, easier for you and it just feels like an easy breezy day most of the time. So management is super important. Okay, okay, okay. And some more templates all about the substitute teacher. So here's just a blank copy if you literally just wanna write, you know, your educational um, background, you know, maybe careers that you've had in the past that connect with education. You want the, you know, main teacher to learn more about you. And then this one, if you want, you can, you know, uh, get a photo, paste it here, or what I like better is just going onto your computer and inserting it that way and typing up some things about yourself. Now, you know, it's kind of like a resume, so you don't want to tell them what your favorite happy hour drink is, right? But just educational stuff, your background, and maybe your philosophy on teaching. So yes, I love these templates. They come in handy because it's just a good way to be a little bit extra. That way the main teacher can see you take your job seriously and they will keep calling you back. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's continue. So the next thing, I hate to say this, but there have been occasions where the teacher forgets to write the lesson plans. Yes, I said that. You heard that right forgets to write the lesson plans. And so when this happens, which I hope it doesn't happen often, let alone ever for you, but just in case you do not want to panic, right? I don't want you running around the classroom. I just want you to breathe and say, let me open my binder. And when you open it, I, yes, have created emergency lesson plans. So I pretty much created this timeline with time frames of what you can be teaching and just so you know, I base this off of a school schedule that would be, you know, from like 8 to 3 p.m. Obviously, I don't know where you live. I don't know what district you work for. I don't know what their bell schedule is. I don't know what time their recess is, right? I don't know when the teacher teaches language arts. You get the point. But this is just, this is just a template so you can kind of see what it looks like to create your own subbing plans. That way, if you use this blank template I gave you, 
Once you get to the school, you realize, yikes, there's no plans. Talk to the office, talk to the teacher next door, learn what time school starts when you have to pick up the students, right? Oh, school starts at 8.15, you would write 8.15, pick up students. Recess is at 11, recess 30 minutes. Oh, they have PE today from two to three o'clock. Cool, let me block that out. That way, you know what you're working with, right? Fill in everything you know, like recess, lunch, and all of that. So then you can plan in between. So now you know, okay, cool. I could teach language arts during this point for an hour. We'll do math at this point for, you know, an hour and a half. So I hope you never have to use this, but at least you know if that were to happen, you have a template that you can kind of base um, your lesson off of. And then by communicating with others, you can create a lesson plan. And then later on, you will notice this binder, it does come with different activities, right? Because if you're making up a lesson plan, now you need to start pulling activities. And yes, I have provided you with that activities for all of the different core subjects and more. Alrighty, so like I mentioned earlier, you may need to make lesson plans, right? And that means you need to also provide the students with activities. Now, the great thing is I created all of these templates, right? You have one for writing topics. So if you need to, you know, focus on the area of writing, you have things for math, you have things for social studies and reading and so much more. And when I created these, I wanted to make it simple, right? Sometimes you may not realize you don't have the plans right away. Maybe the printer is broken at the school and you don't have access to print out these amazing worksheets or lesson plans that you had prior. So these activities that I have included, I made it simple. I made it so you can literally, you know, tell the students to take out materials you know they already have, like paper. If they are a tech school, their iPads. If you have access to a TV or projector, you can literally, you know, project the activity for them, whether if it's you're typing it or writing it, and the students can proceed by doing it. So I like making things simple because um, you never know what's going to happen. Even if there's some downtime, you don't plan for downtime. You didn't know there's going to be downtime. You won't have time to go print something. So having activities that they already have the materials for and make it easy is ideal. So let's Continue. So some writing topics, right? Um, what I know about an animal, a place I'd want to travel to, which one is better, right? You can compare two items and have them state their opinion. I give you a list of different writing topics. The cool thing is this works for all grade levels, right? If it's for upper grade, you can really have them dive in and give you detail and, you know, support um, supporting evidence depending on the topic. You can have them write multiple paragraphs versus a kindergarten classroom, hey, you have them draw a picture, you have them label it. Maybe practice writing some words or sight words that align with the writing topic. So that's what I love about writing. It works with any and every grade. Now, for math activities, again, a list of different activities you can incorporate if you need to teach math and if there's downtime and you need to think of something quick, right? So you can review a math concept or lesson. You can have a small group plan a board game. This is a really fun, popular one. Um, you can, you know, conduct a survey and graph. You can have um, students solve a word problem that you create. Maybe you do a math walk where you post, you know, math problems around the room. Students walk around. They, you know, get to move and try to solve each problem. So those are math activities. And social studies activities, I mean, hello, let's learn about our past, the history, different cultures, right? So again, you can have students write a letter to the president, create a museum exhibit. They can make a timeline of a very influential person. I mean, the list goes on and again, they can do these activities with the materials they already have in their desk. Reading activities. You can do a lot with reading. I mean, students can read a book silently. You can read a book to the students. You can have students retell a story and retelling a story is great for all grade levels but especially those little ones because they're learning new words they're learning you know about sentence structure and how to read and you want them to retell you the story to make sure they comprehend right what they are reading and then lastly i do include some brain breaks i mean everybody needs a break right so there might be those moments where you have downtime but it's only like five minutes and maybe five minutes is just a little amount of time to do one of the core subject activities so 
take a break, you know? You could do some go noodle, you can have students stretch, you could play the classic heads up, seven up, but it's just a way to fill in time, right? If there's a little downtime and give the students a little break or if you're transitioning into different subjects. So I love having these activities on hand. I like keeping them in the same tab as my emergency lesson plans because they do and they will come in handy. A really important part of the binder, I include a daily checklist because by the end of the day, you are exhausted and sometimes you don't remember everything. So it's good to just reference this checklist. That way you can say, oh yeah, I need to do this, this, and that. And I like having um, this handy. That way I can look at it throughout the day so I can ensure I'm checking off the necessary things. And when I follow this to a T and check everything off, I notice that those are the teachers that call me back, the principals that keep asking um, for me to come back to their school so I know this works. So the daily checklist is just reminding you, you know, arrive early to greet staff members, get the keys and so forth. You wanna review lesson plans, safety procedures, you know, walk around the room, get to, you know, familiar side, familiarize yourself with it. And then, you know, before leaving, you know, check off that you left a note, you made sure the room was clean. You really want to make sure that when the teacher comes, he or she is super happy. And when they are super happy and they realize you did a good job, they will most likely call you back. And that means you will become the go-to sub. Okay, now we know everything that comes in the binder, so let's get our binder together. It comes with a cover page. You can go ahead and write your name and pen, pencil, marker, or you can add a text box on PowerPoint or Google and just insert your name in a cool looking font. Now, in the front of my binder, I love having this right here. Just the purpose of the binder so I can always remind myself. And then on this side within my tabs, side note, I do like the tabs that have the folder just because I don't always um, like hole punching things. So totally up to you, but I will definitely uh, link where I got these from off of Amazon. And you can also get them like at Target or Walmart. Anywho, I, like, I love having the positivity form right here so I can always remind myself of my passion, my goals, motivating quotes if I'm ever feeling down. And then on this tab, this is the notes. So these are the notes for the teacher. Make lots of copies, that way you're ready to go and you can always leave a detailed note at the end of the day. All about the sub, I like having this here. That way it's like my little resume with my photo or maybe you don't wanna insert a photo, but just to leave so the teacher knows who you are and most likely when they see that, they could see you're taking initiative, you're organized and they will want you back. Very, very important tab. We talked all about classroom management strategies. They are all here, ready to go. And then same thing with the behavioral ones as well. And that's under the management tab. And then next is our emergency lesson plans. Hopefully you don't have to use this often, but just in case there's the template. And then there's also the one you can use um, if you need a structure, you know, the whole day as well. And then I like putting the activities on the back side of this. That way, if I you know, need to create a lesson plan, I like having these right there ready to go so I can reference them and add in the lesson plan, um, You know, what types of writing topics I may wanna do, what type of math activities, and so forth. And then our next tab are worksheets. So I do not have any worksheets in here, but this is like, if you need to make the lesson plan and you need to print things off in the morning, Go on TPT, there's so many free items you can get off of TPT for different grades and grade levels. And in the very, very back, I'll have all of the copies of my daily checklist. That way I can check off exactly what I need to do. So that is how I set up my ultimate substitute binder. I like this order I have it in. Things where there's you know just a few papers I like having in the front and then Things in the back are where I have multiple copies or all of those worksheets, um, the heavier stuff towards the back. That is the ultimate substitute binder. So that is it for this video, the video all about the ultimate substitute binder and how to become the go-to sub. If you found this video and this resource to be really helpful, I encourage you to let other student teachers and substitute teachers know about this video because I'm all about everyone of us uniting and succeeding together. Again, if you found this video to be helpful, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And as always, hit that red subscribe button below to subscribe to my channel 
That way you are always in the loop of my new videos that may be on a topic that you may be interested in. And again, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to your girl. I am Asia and this is It's Miss Lane. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.